detectives are to begin excavations under a cafe in Gloucester as the search for one of Fred West's possible victims continues. The breakthrough comes more than five decades after 15-year-old Mary Bastholm disappeared in January 1968. But will the discovery bring us any closer to finding out what really happened? Well, we're joined now by criminologist Professor David Wilson. But before we speak to him, Rose West's former solicitor, Leo Goatley, joins us live from the site of the investigation. Uh, Leo, good morning. Thank you for joining us uh, today. Uh, let's morning. talk about your involvement with Rose West, first of all. You were her solicitor. So wh who was the woman that you knew? Um, well, I acted for Rose West from 1992 until 2004, so she was still in her 30s when I uh, was first instructed, and I always found her a fairly straightforward client to get on with, on the level of easy, easy conversation, there was no problem. She did have a moment, she always spoke with a slightly breathless, shrill manner, and did have moments of uh, anger where she could occasionally spit fury but generally uh, it worked quite well but um, if you rattled her cage and asked uh, questions that were she regarded as too sensitive she would just clam up and uh, uh, of course deny everything and so what about Fred West because you had not so much contact with him but yet you still had some what was he like well I was instructed by the pair of them uh, in childcare proceedings for about a year, but Fred disengaged from those and uh, was very aloof and cold with me. I think he felt there was a loss of control when Rose West had separate representation. So I always found him quite difficult. But there was an occasion at uh, the family court in Bristol when my wife actually went along clerking. And uh, with her, he was invading her space in the waiting room, showing her photographs of the building work at Cromwell Street and generally being an obnoxious pain. He didn't seem to be interested in the children, more his handiwork. And um, um, what did you glimpse of the relationship between the two of them? It, I think that the, 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 the image they presented to the public was complex and conflicted. Um, on the one hand, Rose after the allegations in 1992 of child abuse, Rose was um, firmly in Fred's corner and, would, and chose Fred rather than the children, which is something that uh, often happens. Um, but then once they were arrested for murder, she turned against him. And yet, uh, I suspect there was a slight charade. I mean, uh, I'm sure they were very, very close and discussed uh, a lot of their dark and sinister secrets in, in a great amount of detail. Um, let's talk about now what's going on behind you and what this investigation could, could show, if anything. Um, and one of those being that this could somewhat alter the timeline of um, when they first killed someone together, because it is thought that if Mary Vastam is, is found, that this could have been the West's first joint murder. Well, that's the view that I take from the from my perusal of all the um, statements and the interviews, um, I feel there's something contrived about the account that Fred and Rose gave of how they met in a rather courtly romantic way at a bus station in Cheltenham uh, in 1969. Uh, the reality was that after Fred had murdered his first victim, Anna McFall, whose remains were found out at much mark with her unborn child in July 67, Fred then moved to a caravan park in, in Stoke Orchard, near Bishop's Cleeve, within about half a mile of where Rose was living. And by that stage, she was 13, going on 14. Um, and uh, she'd disengaged from school, was truanting, and it was known that some young girls who were truanting from the local comprehensive school were going to Fred's caravan. And I just think that Rose would have been a prime candidate. Also, it was Fred's um, preoccupation in his spare time to drive around ogling it young women and I just think that Rose would certainly have been uh, uh, on his radar and she um, uh, and I think that they would have got together I'm sure she was babysitting and I suspect from that he may have groomed her because let's face it she was a child at the time uh, she was vulnerable this is, she'd been abused this is Mary. by her father. We're, we're talking about Mary here yeah? 
No, we're talking about Rose. 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 We're talking about Rose. Right, OK. So in which case... Um, but if, I thought... If, you, if you, you're standing there with a grim... There's a, there's a grim sight behind you. Um, do you believe... There is. Do you there, believe... There's, there's a tent outside the... Do you believe she's in there? Um, I think it's speculative. Um, but there's always the possibility, and uh, I hope that something is discovered that um, will bring further closure, yeah. okay. either to the Bast homes or some other family. But certainly, the Mary's disappearance was her, uh, was highly conspicuous. Um, she came from a loving family. Um, there was a large-scale inquiry in 1968. It wasn't though, as though she was vanished into thin air as no, a tragic exactly. Well, hopefully from this care. investigation will shed um, some light. There's so many unanswered questions, particularly, like you said, the... for the family. Um, Leo, thank you. Let's come to, to Professor now, uh, David. Um, we were saying there, do you think they'll find a body? What do you think? I mean, you've been following this case closely. All of us have, really, from the comfort of our own sofas. Do you think this could be the answer that everyone's been looking for for so long? I think on the balance of probabilities, yes. You know, there's more evidence to suggest that Mary Bastholm is in the cellar of that cafe than there was to suggest that the body of Richard III was under a car park in Leicester. Right. And there's been this rumour about Mary Bastholm and being buried in that particular cafe for years in Gloucester. Indeed, there was a petition got up in Gloucester in 2012 to get the police to look again at uh, the fact that Mary Bastow might be buried uh, in exactly the spot they're now looking. Well, sadly, um, her, her parents are, are now dead, um, so they'll never know whether or not she is found. Um, but the family, uh, the surrounding wider family, could get some sort of closure out of this. So what do we know about Fred West's access to that building? How, how could she be in that cellar? And, uh, and also, how was she found by this production company? OK, in relation to Fred West's access to uh, the particular cellar in the cafe is, firstly, he frequented the cafe, which is why there's always been this connection between Fred West and Mary Bastholm. Um, so he was a regular in the cafe. He was also a jobbing builder. And there were repairs done to the cellar and to the drains of the cafe that Fred West is reported to have undertaken. And so that's why we think there may be some element of connection to her body being put there. The production company had ground penetrating equipment and they discovered through that ground penetrating equipment two voids in the cellar of the cafe. There have subsequently been other voids found. Now, those voids might be, have been caused by a variety of reasons, but nonetheless, they then took a, drilled a hole, put a camera down, and with that camera took photographs of material that was found in one of the voids, and that material was blue material, and classically, Mary Bastholm went missing wearing a blue My coat, God. at which point, the production company alerts the Gloucestershire police to say, look, you should be looking at what we're discovering. And so what's really interesting to point out here is, is that it's our appetite for true crime as the consumer and wanting to watch this that has made that production company go and investigate this to produce something for us that has made this discovery, hopeful discovery, possible. It's absolutely the zeitgeist, isn't it? True crime is one of the, the key things that drives a lot of TV programming and, and indeed podcasting. And we're taking that next stage, Holly. The, the viewer doesn't just simply want to consume this material, they want to be actively part of the investigation that might solve a mystery. This isn't prurience on the public part. This is their determination to solve a mystery that they believe they might be able to help with. Uh, just another question for Leo. Um, Leo, it, it has been um, discussed that the police have said they may question Rosemary West. Yes. Um, well, if they have the opportunity, then good. Well, well I'm fine. I mean, uh, she's not going to say anything voluntarily, so they'd have to arrest her, and obviously she'd have... Uh, criminal defence who would advise her to say, presumably, to say nothing. Uh, so I don't think it would get anywhere. Um, I, I, I think it's... Uh, uh, certainly Rose West would not be predisposed to say anything unless she reaches some uh, new uh, state of mind. And I hope she does. I really hope that Rose cooperates yeah, at some I mean, stage. The, the, um, in, your, in your experience, David, um, these serial killers tend not to confess. They tend 
to use the power of the secret and take it to the grave? I doubt very much that Rose West would say anything whatsoever if she was questioned in relation to this investigation. In my experience of working with um, serial killers, they like to take their secrets to the grave with them. But there are other people that could be interviewed again by the Gloucestershire police in relation to what has happened. For example, Stephen West, Fred, we Fred and Rose West's son, said that uh, Fred confessed to him whilst he was on remand in Winston Green Prison that he had been responsible for Mary Bastholm's death. But you know, Philip, there's an element of truth in all of this that we, we just have to recognise in terms of the phenomenon of serial murder, that you don't switch on and off that desire to kill. Um, it's like an addiction, a drug to take people's lives. And there are significant gaps in the history of the West, a couple of years in the late 1970s, a period of nine years in the 80s until they're arrested in the 90s, when there are no documented cases of murders whatsoever. That's impossible in my experience of working with serial murderers because they want to keep on killing. And therefore, it's not just a question of Mary Bastholm. Who else? It's about how many other unsolved murders are out there that might be connected... Well, it's been alleged that there could be up to 20. Fred West, Philip, on one occasion said that he had killed 20, on other occasions said that he had killed up to 30. So the Conservative estimate would be he's convicted of 12, and if he killed 20, there's another eight victims. If we take the more uh, exaggerated estimate, he said he killed up to 30, therefore there are another 18 victims. And let's also remember that before he goes to Gloucester, he lived in Glasgow, and there are a number of unsolved yeah. murders of women in his target group yeah who were also went missing when he was living in Glasgow, and their bodies might also be part of this further investigation My that needs God. to be done as a consequence of what's happening today in Gloucester. OK, mm, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Dave, thank you very, very much. much indeed, thank and thank you. you, Leo, as well. Thank you.